This is Metal Mike, and in this episode, I talk to the killer bassist of Riley's LA Guns, Kelly Nichols. We discuss their recent release, Renegades. We also revisit the classic LA Guns albums that Kelly played on in the late 80s and early 90s. It's a good one. Check it out. Well, Kelly, welcome to the 80s Glam Metal Cast. How you doing, brother? Hey, thanks, uh, thanks for having me having me uh i'm doing well thank you great to hear it man so let's let's talk some renegades i gotta be honest i didn't know what to expect um but i've listened yeah. to it quite a few times man i think it's pretty damn good thanks very much we didn't know what to expect either <laughs> <laughs> it's cool because you know it has it's got some classic vibes it's got some modern vibes and a lot of well-written songs like stuff like crawl and all that you are don't want to know i mean it, it's catchy stuff man good rocking stuff yeah thanks very much man we tried really hard to um you know keep it just a hard rocking band that uh not uh you know just stay true to who we were who Ellie Hans was as uh best as possible keep a nice raw punky edge kind of on some songs and stuff and uh yeah thanks man it's it's, it's not like the old days you have a lot of time to uh you know pre-production and everything so, so we uh did a lot of it through video and uh sending uh, files back and forth and it was um, a unique experience but uh, uh they were uh easy to work with scott and kurt and steve so it was a good uh, working relationship so that really that really helped yeah and I, I dig Kurt's voice. You know, he's got his own vibe, but it, it fits in with the L.A. Gun sound. Yeah, I think he's got a great voice. I think he's got an easy-to-listen-to voice. You don't really have to, like, you know, some singers have a love-it-or-hate-it kind of voice, and I think he's got a, a, a wider appeal kind of voice. And, you know, super nice guy, super talented, amazing guitar player as well, so brings a lot to the table. How did the songwriting shake out on this album? The songwriting was really, um, you know, everybody brought in some ideas, and then we uh, collaborated on them as much as possible. And you know, the like Kurt and Scott and Steve added a lot to the stuff I brought. And we all kind of just, you know, really team effort, man. I think I would say just to, uh, you know, use uh, as much of the time that we had to uh, to get it done. You know, we had we only recorded it in seven days, but uh, I mean, even in the studio, for like the, you know, till the last second, we were trying different stuff and. and and uh, things were popping up uh, because we, we live in four different states, so we can't really get together and just jam and, and go through. And so everything was kind of like, you know, in the studio, we'd have an idea of something like a melody or, a, or something. And, you know, but everybody was just kept an open mind about it. And just, I mean, to the very last second, you know, trying everything we could on every song, like working together as a, as a team. And it was really, really just a great experience for that. When I look back at like the songwriting credits on some of the classic albums, it shows like the songs were written by everybody. And yeah. So are there certain songs that like are more a Kelly Nichols songs than anybody else's? Or when you think back to some of the classic albums? Well, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, there, there's a lot of songs that goes with like everybody's, you know, some songs were more of those other guys, and some songs, you know, we all brought in songs. We keep bringing in an initial idea, you know, and everything. And, uh, you know, it depends how far along it is with it. Sometimes it doesn't have vocals. Sometimes it needs a melody line. So we all, you know, we all wanted to have a say and an input in it. So, you know, we, we split everything equally. And we still do today. We split all the voices equally. Uh, and, you know, just so everybody had a, you know, everybody could bring in something and contribute. You know what I mean? Yeah, definitely. So you got some live gigs coming up. You got M3. I know you guys got, got some shows with Slaughter. So it's got to be nice to kind of get out there and promote the album and, you know, get back into the swing of things. Oh, man, yeah. So, I mean, you know, we just can't wait. Uh, you know, we were so excited to, you know, the, the album was supposed to come out last March or April. And, uh, you know, we just kept, we ended up having to push it back and push it back. There's a, there's a company that makes the actual uh, pressings of the vinyl that uh, caught on fire. So, uh, you know, and everybody's putting out vinyl. So we, had to, we ended up, on, uh, you know, kind of like on a waiting list. So we put out singles in the meantime and everything. It just like screwed everything up. And yeah, you know, you put out a new record, you're ready to go out and play it. So we haven't, you know, played any of those songs together live yet. So we're looking forward to uh, to that this summer. We have I we have the Iowa State Fair and we have a show at Sturgis as well. So yeah, we're you know we're just dying to. Uh, I'm sure everybody is you know go out there and play some music and try to have a good day. Yeah, definitely. When it's time to come up with a set list, are there certain albums uh, from the back catalog or songs that you're focusing on? How, I mean, it's got to be. It's always tough. 
for for everybody who has a, you know a decent sized catalog. Yeah, we're trying to, to uh, only use uh, songs that both uh, you know uh, earlier stuff that Steve and I both played on. Mm-hmm. So we're trying to uh, stick to those kind of albums that uh, you know I don't really want to do songs that I didn't play on. So, uh, but we have enough there, and then we're going to do you know a few songs off the new record for sure, just because we want to play them and uh, I think they're going to bring good energy and uh, for, you know because they were tailor made for Kurt so it's just going to be fun to see him you know when he's like really comfortable singing his own stuff so uh, we're going to mix it up I definitely want to bring in some of the new stuff though too yeah it'll be, uh, it'll be a little bit of everything when you look back at the classic albums, is there an album that you gravitate to as a favorite over any of the other ones? You know, they're all they're, they're all weird because they're all like their own little time capsule. <laughs> right. so, you know, there's so there's like a time span in between them all, and you know, you, you you're in a different state of mind, kind of in a different place all the time. You know, you put you put one out, then you put one out like a year and a half or two years later, and then you know, your your life's kind of changed and. You, different experiences and stuff so it's hard to kind of uh pinpoint one i like uh you know hollywood vampires like i had we had done production for like four or five months and i, and I had uh i had written all my bass parts and everything and then we got uh a, a producer this guy named michael jackson not not the michael jackson but <laughs> i know, know who you're talking about he produced kiss okay so he you know he he came in and like changed all my parts and really? like you know at the time i was kind of like I don't know if I was angry, if I was just like, you know, not into into it, but I eventually did it and it was good. You know, they they made a good difference and it was, you know, maybe I was a little more open-minded at that point than probably the earlier days. So, you know, they're all different. They all have a different feel and a different vibe going through them. You know, they're, they're, they're like children, you know, they're all different. I mean, the debut is, you know, it's very raw and gritty. And then, then by the time you get to Cocked and Loaded, uh, I feel like the songwriting is coming together even stronger, and uh, it's a pretty epic album, man. I think I gravitate toward Cocked and Loaded. Yeah, thanks. I mean, yeah, then, you know, you got a little bit more studio experience. You kind of have a little bit more idea of, like, how it goes. And, you know, yeah, you, hopefully your songwriting gets better. It's, you know, it's it's uh, it's an art, and it's a skill at the same time. It's something that, you know, definitely can improve, and, it, you know, so you grow a little bit, you have... Uh, you know, a little bit more time to uh, kind of put into it. So, you know, it's a progression. Yeah, I, did, I like the bass on that one, too, because I, there's a lot of cool walking bass lines, and even something like Sleazy Come, Easy Go, you know, you've got your, your bass kind of up in the front at the beginning of that one. I think I really I like the bass a lot on that album. Yeah, thanks. It's all about the bass player. No. <laughs> 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 no, the bass, you know, I like, uh, I, I grew up a lot of blues and reggae and stuff, so I like, stuff and, and just I try to you know play the bass like a bass you know should be played like the right part for the song I don't really I'm not like an amazing bass player by any means and you know just doing all these wicked riffs and stuff for no reason I try to like you know just be able to play the right part for the song yeah oh you definitely do that you know a lot of one thing that you well, did is you kept with the riffs too you know with the rest of the band there was a lot of times and not that these guys couldn't play but you there's a lot of bass lines out of the 80s songs that are just doom 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 you know just chugging along which sometimes that's what's needed but i always liked when the bass yeah. was doing a little bit more than that you know what i mean yeah i definitely you know think i got more in, into the bass like i just i always kept learning uh you know as i went through but um being in this band, was, I mean, our rehearsals were so loud. Like, you know, a lot of the time I was just trying to stay at key. I couldn't mm-hmm. even really hear, like, what I was doing. So, like, intricate bass lines were hard to do. And I really noticed that, like, after I left L.A. Guns, I jammed with some friends and stuff. And in my friend's garage, you know, with little amps and stuff. And you could really hear everybody. And it really made, like, a difference when you could really hear. But at that, at that volume, I mean, we just rehearsed so loud as well. And kind of regret that but uh it just kind of limited you know my playing as as what i could do because it was like i was just trying to stay at key most of the time you know yeah when you look back at some of the tours who are some of the favorite bands to to go out on the road with uh i would say you know the bigger the band the nicer they were the smaller the band the more stupid (laughs) shit would happen you know like acdc well, we toured with them twice. They were amazing. They gave us extra uh, stage room. They gave us extra lighting because, you know, they've done matter because as soon as they come on, you forget 
Nothing even existed. You know, this is such a powerhouse. So, oh, right. uh, you know, big bands like big bands like that were usually more uh, accommodating, and there wasn't like any so much ri- rivalry or anything. You know, because they were already kind of legends. So, right. You're not going to steal their. You know, you're not going to steal their thunder. So it was. Uh, you know, the, the littler bands, you know, when it was like, yeah, you know, who's headlining, co-headlining, who goes on first, all that kind of crap was, uh, you know, it was tedious and stuff. And some of those some of those bands we didn't always get along with and stuff. So, you know, but we don't care about that shit no more. <laughs> it's over. <laughs> yeah, we just, yeah, it's over, man. We just want to play. I, mean, I don't care, if, you know, who's on after me or who's on before me. We don't have any of that kind of animosity or attitude anymore. We just want to get up there and, and play and have fun. And don't, you know, none of that is important anymore. As you got to the 90s, it seemed like some of the 80s bands were kind of fading out a little bit. But I felt like LA yeah. Guns was, was doing well still in the early 90s. You know, uh, It's Over Now was, was, a, was a decent hit for you guys. And I remember... You're playing like Spring Break in '92 or something like that on uh, on MTV, and I was just like, "This is awesome!" Because a lot of the other bands were just kind of falling apart, and LA Guns was was going still pretty strong early '90s. Yeah, that was funny. We played uh, Spring Break with uh, Marky Mark, and uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> right? It was kind of weird, but it worked, you know. It was weird, but it worked. But you know, it was like the Seattle thing came, and it was just like uh, you know, everybody like changed their their fashion and their clothing style and their hairstyle and. You know, music changed, and the, the the attitude of the music changed, and what they were singing about was different. And so, a lot of you know, it was it was scary, you know, to be in a band because you felt like everybody just kind of turned your back on you. But we ended up doing a, a show in Seattle, like shortly after that. Uh, you know, first Nirvana record came out, mm-hmm. and you know, we sold it out, so it was still great. They were still there. It was, it was just like you know, it was such a scene coming from Seattle. You didn't know like. What, you know where you stood anymore. You know what I mean? Yeah. What'd you think of all that stuff at the time, and what do you think of it now? Oh, uh, yeah. I thought some of it was good. I mean, mm-hmm. like you know, the first time I heard Soundgarden and stuff, and uh, I thought, you know, they were incredible. Um, I, I really loved Courtney Courtney Love's record from Hole, her first record. I thought it was an amazing record. And so, you know, there was some good stuff coming out of it. I, I didn't really care about like kind of like you know the, the the downer part of it, some of it, yeah. you know, but. Um, Cause, I mean, they, you know, our our music was all, you know, party, 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 uh, you know, and and it was fun. It was kind of like upbeat and stuff. So, you know, I like that. But, they, you know, there was some really great stuff that came out of that scene. So, yeah, it, you know, it happens. It's bound to happen, you know, anyway. I mean, it, it's got to change, you know. Everybody has their theories that, you know, um, you know, grunge killed 80s metal. What do you think? Do you think 80s metal got killed by, like, oversaturation, by the labels? What, do you, what, what is your thought on all that? I think it was time for a change. Mm-hmm. I think, uh, you know, there were certain songs that came out towards the end there that were just so kind of, like, corny and cheesy. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it, it, it was, it, it was like self-imploding at the same time sure. as you know, this whole new energy and vibe was coming out of Seattle. So, you know, I think it was like kind of bound to happen. Yeah, I think so too. But it was a good run. You know, it was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when you get to a vicious circle, I mean, I remember local radio in my area was playing Long Time Dead, so I felt like the guns were still going through it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that album? I, I go back and listen to it. I really like that album. Yeah, I uh, just started listening to a little bit of that album, too. Yeah, it was a good album, man. You know, you, we tried our best on all of them, you know what I mean? You, you really do, because, you know, you're up there playing it, and, uh, you know, so, I mean, it's just kind of like, you know, that's what came out at the time. But, you know, just know that we tried our best. <laughs> <laughs> and you do a lead vocal on that one. Nothing better to do. That's that's pretty cool, too, man. I like that. Yeah, thanks. I appreciate that. That was just not supposed to happen. You know, that, <laughs> that song was an accident. That was an accident, that song. I had I had written the music and stuff for it, and we had recorded it and everything, and we didn't really have a... Phil didn't have a melody line for it, so we were in the studio one day, and... Um, Everybody went out to dinner, take a dinner break, and I stayed in the studio with the engineer. And I said, "Hey, let me, uh, you know, I had a few beers, so I was like, let me, let me do a guide vocal for Phil. So when they come back from dinner, he'll have an idea, have a melody line, and you know, he can sing it." So I just wrote down some stuff really quick and just <laughs> belted it out like in one take, maybe two takes at the most. And when Phil came back from dinner, we played it for him, and uh, you know, he refused to redo it. He was like, "No, man, that." It is an English accent, you know. Listen, mate, that song's done. You know, <laughs> I was like, 
I was mortified. I was like, what do you mean it's done? I had no plan on singing a song or, you know, even keeping those lyrics uh, that I wrote. But it was like, you know, it was done. It was like, oh, my God. The, the odd thing about <laughs> that, that. that song is I kind of, I don't know if I, I, I think I may have thought it was a cover because it just reminds me of like, a, I don't know, like almost the, like a spirit of like a George Thorogood, you know, like a Bustin' Balls, you know, and I thought, I, I kind of thought it was a cover. And then I think one day I was looking through the liner notes. I was like, oh, that's actually a, was written by the guns. I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah. It was written like a five minutes, but, you know. <laughs> I mean, I really just jotted down, like, I grabbed a notepad and just wrote it down and pumped it a couple of times. I was like, let's go. <laughs> so when we talk, we, go. we talk about, again, about, like, your contributions to writing. So did you ever do lyrics, or are you a music guy? What kind of, when you when you get songwriting credits on some of this stuff, what what did you bring in? Oh, yeah, well, I brought in uh, Ballad of Jane, which uh, I wrote the music with Mick, and then I wrote 90% of the lyrics, melody okay. line, all that, so... I did write a lot of lyrics uh, along the way, and I changed just like a couple of key words sometimes too. Like, for instance, uh, I found you, uh, Phil wanted to call it, I'll call you. <laughs> it was just like, I'll call you. And I was like, I just felt so personal. I was like, How about I found you? Yeah. And so little, th- little things like that, you know, that just kind of hopefully make the difference on, on the, the song, you know. So I mean, you just never stop, you know, uh, trying to improve it or trying to you know, make sure it's right before it comes out. So you just work on it to the very end. So, you know, but, uh, you know, that's why you got to like keep an open mind and be willing to share your ideas. You know, that really helps uh, trying to get all the credit for something, you know, yeah. to, to share it and get, that, that's you know, somebody throws in a good idea and it's a good idea and it shouldn't matter. You know, that's why we all, uh, you know, everything was kind of equal like we to get in it everybody's a part of this everybody has to carry their weight you know try to write some songs and you know uh, you know fix it because so, sometimes you just don't hear like you know not something that somebody else hears so it, it's cool do you love bands like tough cats and boots jet boy jailhouse wild side and more then get your ass over to ddr music group There's tons of rare hair and glam metal CDs that you need in your collection. DDRmusicgroup.com. Yeah, it's funny, you know, when you mentioned Ballad of Janes, uh, I interviewed Kevin Steele from the band Rocks Gang. You know who he is, Kevin Steele? I'm not sure if I... I, I've heard of them, but I don't know if I've I've ever met or anything. So we got talking, and there's a song on their debut album called Red Rose, okay? And he must have worked before you guys did with the the video producer the guy who produced uh the director rather of the uh, ballad of gene so they must have been talking with this yeah. guy and he goes i got this idea you know for this red rose video we'll have like a, a a white mansion and there'll be these rose petals and all this stuff but i guess the video never happened now ultimately he directs ballad of jane and some of these elements that were talked about for for their video end up in your video. So I don't know if you've ever heard that story. No, I did not, but uh, I'm not surprised. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we sat that at a, uh, like Ferdinand Marcos's mistress's estate in Pasadena, <laughs> and the and the mansion on the property had been burnt down, so it was just the garden. So oh, okay. we just shot it in the in the gardens because once his wife found out she had it burnt to the ground oh gotcha so, was, so there was no real nice mansion but it was just the gardens were beautiful and stuff so uh, yeah we just ended up in Pasadena that's funny so by the time you get to American Hardcore you you write some material for that album but you're out um, what happened at that point? Why did you leave the band at that point? I don't know if I wrote any material for it, but I, I was definitely like, I felt like it was just time to go. I think because mm-hmm. once Phil had quit and then we started getting different singers in, uh, I just really wasn't digging anything. Um, I just wasn't digging the direction it was going. It was going like really heavy, right. kind of Pantera style. And I just like, I don't really like that kind of singer. So, I just felt like, you know, it's time for me to go. It's like try to do something else, you know. What did you do after that? Because it kind of, I'll be honest, I lost track of, of you uh, after that point. Yeah, I got a job doing some graphic design work and stuff, and I've been doing that ever since. Nice. I have my own company now. I do, uh, I do computer graphics since 1993 I started. So uh, I just would go to my brother's house, and uh, he was already doing it, and he was... Uh, 
you know, <clears throat> working at home and just creating cool stuff on the computer. And I was like, you know, I bet that looks like a fun, creative gig. Like, I, I, I wanted to stay creative as much as I could. So I just went out and bought one, set it up at his house for a week, and then started doing, you know, trying to get gigs for people and, and creating stuff. And uh, I do all our stuff now. I do all our website and all our merchandise and everything. I do all that. So nice. it helps and it keeps costs down and we get a say in it, you know, what yeah. it looks like. Yeah, that's awesome. I did, yeah, I did the whole album cover and all that, so it's, it's fun. Cool. What other, like, what other stuff do you work? Do you freelance for companies and stuff like that? Yeah, I free, I, yeah, I try to find freelance gigs to work about the friends and uh, and uh, yeah, we just did a T-shirt for a racetrack uh, in uh, Iowa, so we get uh, little weird projects and stuff. So that's fun. awesome. So, what made you want to come back into music? So, was it just kind of calling your name, or just couldn't let it go? What happened? Well, again, you know, I, it was my daughter is uh, was turning eighteen and she was going off to college. So, um, I got a call from Phil, and he asked me to help him work on this song, and uh, I uh, I just really didn't feel like there was a song there so i asked him if we could kind of create one together and uh asked him if i should you know i could come back kind of you know if i if he thought it would be a good idea if i came back and joined the band because I, mm-hmm. I have the time now my daughter's going to college i could you know i could go out and play again now yeah and um that didn't work out man they 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 didn't want that so a few weeks later i got a call from steve and he explained that uh this whole project idea that was uh, brought up by the guys who run m3 at uh you know they said because uh, the other la guns they don't want to play there so he asked steve you know you know put a band together and come play this show so i got a call from steve and uh and we knew and uh, he he knew scotty could already play guitar i didn't know scotty could play guitar so well <laughs> but once he met uh you know getting scotty i was like really he could play like that and uh, he's like yeah so Scotty could do the gig, and then we—he uh, knew the singer guy, so kind of all just fell together, and it was you know going to be one show, and then we ended up getting a record deal with Golden Robot Records out of Australia, gave us a record deal from that one show. So we did two shows. We did one more show in Vegas, and then we went and did the record uh, November uh, 2019, and uh, and then uh, you know now we got some gigs, and we're going to keep it going. So you know, just kind of happened like that. Yeah, that's awesome. You probably get asked this all the time, but do you think there's any way to, to, to bury the hatchet with everybody and get all, everybody back together from the original band, or do you think that's just not possible ever? Well, I mean, kind of like, you know, I feel like I really tried that, you know. I talked to Phil, and, uh, you know, he, in not so many words, didn't think it would be good that I could do it. Mm-hmm. So, you know, I mean, like I really, you know, I was ready to go back. And they they didn't want me so and you know now there's been so many negative and kind of hurtful things uh, said by them that I don't think that it'll ever happen again. There's really there's really no need for it. You know it's a, it's a shame. Yeah, yeah. You know it's a shame because yeah, I mean I get it. I'm a fan. I you know I like a lot of bands and I you know I get it. You want to see the original band and the way that it was when you like them, but it's just some. Some people just ain't cool. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. And, like a yeah, exactly. I mean, you know, and, and, and for, you know, we see this a lot, especially now in, in the business. There's a lot of people, you know, right, Every the fans want it to get back together, and, and maybe it's not possible. And the thing with the fans, the fans don't really understand the inner workings of things either. You know what I mean? They just, they just kind of want that old vibe from the 80s, you know, that they remember as a kid. So, and, and sometimes that just yeah. can't happen, you know? Yeah, it's hard to, you know, it, it, it's yeah. There's a, there's so much that goes on that people don't get, like why this is happening or or what. But you know, it's hard to and you know you can't even explain it because some people will just never get it. You know, so it's kind of like you can ask me at a show or something, and I could explain it to you, but you know, it's hard to say. But this, you know, there's things that are said that are hurtful and uh, you know disrespectful, and there's really no reason for them. Uh, and, but, you know, it does, uh, it does something to leave a mark, man. So it's hard to, sometimes, you know, hard to, to, to pass on and, and just, you know, some things you just can't wipe under the rug, kind of. Yeah. 
No, I understand. So what's the future plans at this point? Just uh, get out there and play and, and then just kind of see where it goes? What's the future plans? Yeah, the plan is to get out there this summer and, and uh, do uh, a handful of shows and then uh, probably start uh, another record like you know September, October, towards the end of the year and uh, let's see what happens. Awesome, man. Well, hey, I appreciate talking with you, Kelly. I was been a big fan all my life. Anything you want to say to all your fans out there that are listening to this? Yeah, well, first, thank you very much, man. I appreciate that. And to everybody listening, thanks very much for uh, keeping an open mind, those who have, and uh, supporting us on this version and everything. And you can check us out at uh, uh, com for any updates and stuff. So, uh, you know, a lot, a lot of that's happening with shows like some are being you know pushed back some are being some are happening so to get all the updates and stuff check us out there and on facebook and you know thanks thanks very much everybody stay safe appreciate that man and uh, if you can tell steve one thing for me i love his drumming yeah. I'm, I'm a huge fan of live in the raw by wasp my that's one of my favorite live albums so let him know that <laughs> <laughs> okay i sure will man that's awesome all right, brother. Have a good night. All right, you too, man. Thank you so much. Yep. Take care, Mike. Yeah, take Bye. care, brother. Bye-bye. Well, that was great chatting with Kelly. Make sure you become a subscriber to the 80s Glam Metal Cast on YouTube. Rock on!